Okay, great. So welcome to those who are watching it recorded. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't have a whole lot of updates this year um, to start this meeting with because things are going well. <laughs> um, there's no COVID protocols. It's not a thing anymore, right, everyone? Um, and so, so that's nice. Um, we, we, we have full enrollment. We have a couple of spots available. Um, I don't know if anyone here is on the wait list still. Um, if you are, please send me a message. Let me know that you're still on the wait list and interested. Um, but we have one spot that's open in our first session traditional trail program. We have one spot in our third session, Summit to Summit. Um, we have a few CIT spots in both first and second session. That's our counselor and training leadership program. And, and then we have uh, three or four spots in our Girls Getaway Trail program, which is new. Um, well, it's new that we've put it in after enrollment started, um, but it's not new to camp. It's just something that we're bringing back. Um, an opportunity for a group of all female identifying campers to go out on the trail together with two female counselors um, and just have that chance to, to be in that group of just girls. Um, it often happens just by chance of who enrolls that we have groups of all boys, <laughs> um, but it doesn't happen that way for girls. So we're kind of nurturing that space. Um, for feminine energy out in the woods and teaching them all those skills. So if you, if any campers who are listening now are interested in switching to that group, or if you know anyone who's interested in enrolling um, in the girls getaway, that's happening during third session, which is August 3rd to the 12th. Um, just send me a direct message to Martha at Go Camp U, um, and I will give you all the details on that program. Um, Let's see, what else was I going to share with everyone? Yeah, everything is going smoothly. We have an amazing group of staff this year. Um, about three quarters of our staff is returning staff who have come back from last year. Um, so that is great. That gives us a great baseline for um, experience and training, as well as I think it reflects really well in our programs that people are excited to come back and work for us because um, in the community of summer camp counselors and directors that I'm part of through the American Camping Association, um, there's a lot of camps that are still struggling to find staff. And we, I had to not hire people. I had to turn people away, which was hard. It's heartbreaking. I want everyone to be able to come to camp. Um, but we have such great returning um, counselors. So I wasn't able to hire everyone totally new. Um, so yeah, the snowpack is looking good, but not not daunting. So that's great for our uh, water supply. Our, our enrollment is great. Our staff is great. Um, and things are progressing really well for all of the, uh, all the organization that goes into starting a new summer. And then this year is our 75th anniversary also, which is really cool. Camp Unilay was started in 1949. Um, by a group of Quakers in the in the Santa Cruz Mountains in Ben Lomond. And we've been up in the Trinity Alps since 56 um, in the property where we are now. This is Mosquito Lake behind me. Um, and, and so all that time we've been bringing kids together from diverse backgrounds to live in the woods and learn to be friends. Um, so we're excited to keep that going. And then we have two exciting events this year that I'm sure you've gotten emails about. Um, our gala fundraiser is happening in just a couple of weeks in Palo Alto. So if you are in the area, get your tickets now. Um, and then in the fall, in October, we'll be going back to the Ben Lomond Quaker Center for a big reunion weekend. And that includes everyone who has participated in camp since from 1949 till now. So, um, even if your camper, this is their first year, you and your family are invited to come and join us for that event in October, and you'll be getting more information about that later. Um, so I think those are my 
big updates. Um, and I'm excited to just open the floor to all of you um, to ask your questions. So feel free to put them in the chat or to just um, raise a hand and I will answer them live. Who's ready? Melissa. Hi, Marissa. Hi. Um, burning question, I think probably in my kiddo's mind is the um, policy on do you have to hike all the way into camp? Ooh. What is the way in my day? It used to be that kids got dropped off at Scott Mountain Summit and walked seven miles into camp. What's the current policy or plan or hope? The that that is a myth, a legend, and a reality. <laughs> the seven mile walk into camp. Um we have gone through various attempts to provide transportation up the road and it is very tricky. Um, most kids do the whole seven mile walk. Um, in the past couple of years, we've used the trucks to do um, hay rides, which is legal on our private road if everyone is sitting down in the back of the truck. Um, we've used the van just doing little leapfrogs, but for the most part, the kids make it up there. They take their time. We have um, water. We have a zing, zing stop. Zing, if you don't know, is um, a very important piece of camp life. It is um, kids earmuffs. It's Kool-Aid. It's a very magical sugary drink um, <laughs> that is mined in the Marble Mountains. You'll hear all the mythology when you get there, kids. But um, yeah, so we have you know, hydration and snack stops along the way. But um, yeah, it's true, Melissa, they still walk, they still walk up the road. So it's important to um, make sure that your kids have a pair of comfortable shoes as soon as they get there that they can access from their duffel bag. We get them all, um, you know, their hats and their water bottles filled and they start walking. And then clearly if there's kids that are struggling, we pick them up um, and we give them a ride. But it also serves a, a purpose for us of getting to know the, um, the hiking strength of the kids. So it's the way for counselors to kind of gauge their group as they're walking up together so that they know um, how to plan their first group hike, which leaves two days later. Um, Cause you can only go as long and as fast as your um, shortest legs <laughs> of your hikers. Um, and I have a question in the chat. How long does it usually take to do that hike? Um, <clears throat> a couple hours they get off the bus at about three um and then we do a big circle up everybody takes their time getting their shoes changed and their hats on their water bottles filled um <clears throat> but everybody's up there by dinner time by six or so um any later than that and people are getting rides so it's a couple hours, but it's a beautiful, beautiful walk if anybody's done it before. Um, other chat question, how might we get the names in Campus of Art Sons Group in case we, oh. Oh, that is a good question. Um, we don't connect families before camp starts because the groups don't get created until we are um, already up at camp. So this, for the recordings purposes and for those of you who aren't reading the chat, the question is, how might we get names and ages of the campers in our son's group in case we can try to connect with them beforehand? Um, so yeah, we we won't be able to connect families before camp. Um, after camp, kids can share their own contact information or you can reach out to the office and we can um, connect kids after camp that wanna stay in touch. Um, but for the most part, we make the groups just a couple of days before the campers arrive. So sorry about that. Um, Julie. So a couple of follow-up questions on those two questions. Um, so 
on that that hike in, it's just hats and water bottle. They're not carrying a heavy backpack or anything. No, good point. Just yeah, absolutely. Sure. All okay. of their gear, duffel bags, everything gets trucked up on our trucks. Yeah, they just okay, great. Have a water bottle. Yeah. Okay, and then um, just to gauge and make sure that you know it's going to be inclusive and accommodating for the different range, maybe maybe of ages. Like, how do we? How will we know? Like, will there be someone similar age and comfortability to the children that have signed up? I mean, that's one of, you know, yeah, because I've yeah. got two kids of very different ages and they've never been to this camp. So just wanting to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We um we mix kids up. Um, so we have all gender groups and we spread the ages a little bit, but we, we cluster them. So when I'm, ma so making campsite groups is one of the hardest things that I have to do, to be honest, um, because we just don't have a ton of information about the campers when, before they get up to camp. Um, so that's why we have the question about like hiking experience and how far and fast you want to hike, um, because that helps determine how we put our groups together. But we always try and do our best to make sure that a kid, ha every kid has at least a potential peer um, or several in their age and gender and hiking ability range. Um, so it, we try not to make a group that's only 10 year olds because that's challenging for them and it's challenging for the staff because that's the youngest age. Um, but it, it might be a range, we might have three groups that are 10 to 12 year olds. And then we'll try and you know have, make sure that a pair of 12 year old girls and a pair of 12 year old boys and a pair of 11 year olds, you know, like that. So, um, but things get a little complicated when people request to be with friends or request um, to be with siblings. So um, we, yeah, it's a little complicated, but we really try and make, uh, <clears throat> make sure kids have peers. And it does happen occasionally that a kid will feel, a camper will feel like this group just isn't right for me. I don't, I'm not connecting with anyone and, you know, or I've made this friend on day one and they're in another group and we'll just, we'll do our best to accommodate that because we really want everybody to have a friend. Um, good question. Alex. Uh, yeah. Related to that, uh, my child is going with two other friends mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering about if he could be in the same group. I think they were excited about going together. Yeah, so on the in camp doc in the general information section, there's a place where you can put that. So um, who okay. do you want to do it? So make sure you do put that in there. And if all three of the kids put each other's names, um, that's definitely something that we try and honor um, when we are putting together the groups. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see, I don't see any other hands raised. Let me go to the chat. Uh, oh, do they hike up with the gear? I answered that. Nope. Um, okay. Question is, our daughter's wondering if many kids bring tents to sleep in. Um, that is a good question. Some kids do bring tents. We provide rain coverage um, tarps, so they're not fully enclosed tents. Um, the thing that is interesting about tents is they end up being more like a storage room for kids um, because we're campers are not allowed to share a tent unless they're siblings. Uh, we let all kinds of kids sleep outside together, but for supervision reasons, um, campers cannot sleep enclosed in a covered tent um, with any other kids. So if you bring a tent, it actually helps keep your stuff clean and dry, um, but um, you'll, unless you're sleeping with a sibling, you'll sleep in it by yourself, which is totally fine if you're interested in that. And some, sometimes it can be buggy. Other times there's no bugs. That's something that we really have very little control over. or It's really hard to predict. Um, but a tent is one of the only defenses we, one has against bugs. <laughs> so something to think about. Um, Let's see, what do we do to monitor wildfire risk? That's a great question. Um, wildfire is always on our minds living out there. Um, and depending on the year and the weather, um, you know, the risk is greater or less. Last year, we didn't see any fire danger in our area. Um, and the year before there was lightning strike right in our basin. So it didn't, it didn't um, progress at all. It was just, 
you know, it happened at the end of the summer and it was scary, but we maintained, you know, we managed it just fine. So we are um, in contact with the Forest Service. We check in um, every day with the weather predictions and the air quality. So if there was a big fire in the past several years, there have been big fires in other forests nearby. Um, so we monitor the air quality. Um, that's really the bigger concern is, is smoke drifting. Um, so yeah, it's an unfortunate consequence of climate change, um, but it is definitely something that we are monitoring all the time. Um, I'm gonna do two more chat questions and then I'll come to you, Allie. Um, if my child is signed up to be with a friend, will they be in the same group? Yeah, so if you're, please put it on the camp doc general section as who you wanna be with. Um, Yep, so this question is about requesting to be together in Summit to Summit. We have two Summit to Summit groups per session. And so if you request to be together, we will put them together. Um, okay, I'm gonna come back to the gear questions after I hear from Allie. Allie, go ahead. Hi, hi, Martha. Um, so my daughter is a new camper this year. She is almost 12. And um, she's at science camp this week at school preparing. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'm what we're our her quandary was the bathroom situation. She's kind of um, she likes to brush her luxurious hair and things like that. So I'm I'm what I'm asking about that for her because she will that's her kind of her only concern right now. Okay, that's a great question. Um, our bathroom situation is that they are basically their toilet stalls only. So if she's gonna if she's concerned about a place to brush her luxurious hair, <laughs> she's gonna have to use a hand mirror. Okay. But or there is a mirror outside of the nurse's shack, which is a real fun place to hang out. Lots of people who like to brush their hair and put on um lots of lotions and things to hang out outside the nurse's shack. And the nurses are always very accommodating to that um, pampering that happens there because there's a mirror. Um, <laughs> but the but actual, there are bathroom stalls. Yeah, the actual bathrooms okay. have three um, large composting toilet buildings that have like two separate rooms. Um, but they are all, it's all pit toilets. There's no flush toilets at all at camp. Um, so the composters are like, you have to take steps up because they have a big you know, composting situation underneath the mechanisms and buckets and whatnot. And then we also have um, traditional vaulted pit toilets that are basically a seat over a deep hole in the ground that have been there for, you know, 40 to 50 years. And they, um, they do a great job. And they're there. Then we have ply, like plywood walls with doors that lock. Um, and roofs that are usually separated so there's like an air gap and that but they're tall enough um that you can't really see into them or climb into them but so they're there's um they're private but they're pit toilets you know i'm not gonna sugarcoat it <laughs> <laughs> and do martha and do speaking of bathroom stuff do, what's the showering situation or do they yeah do so they shower <laughs> we, have, we have three showers in our basin and they are solar heated um, I call it a guilt-free shower because growing up in California, um, you know, take a quick shower and don't use too much hot water, but the hot water is heated by the sun and the water's running down the mountain anyway. So you're not wasting it. It's just pouring out in a different place than it would have. Um, so, but the tricky part is that they're only hot for a certain number of hours in the afternoon. So if your kid is a wake up and take a shower kind of kid, they might need to adjust that or be willing to take a very cold shower. <laughs> um, but the lake is always available for jumping in and, and the counselors, um, we are always encouraging kids to get in some water every day if they can um, to rinse off the dust and the sweat, especially when they're backpacking. Um, every hike goes to a place that has water, whether it's a lake or a nice creek. Um, they're always 
going to sleep in a spot that has some water that they can get into to rinse off. Um, and then, but yeah, when you're in base camp, the showers are an afternoon activity because that's when it's warm, but they're, but they're nice. That sounds great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to a couple questions in the chat here. What size backpack do you recommend? That is a good question because, um, if your camper is small and still growing, I recommend not buying them their own backpack, send them to camp and we will lend them one, um, that, that will be the right size. And, and then they leave it at camp and you haven't spent any money on a backpack. That's not going to fit them next year. Um, if they're a bigger teenager, um, then make sure you fit it to their waist. It doesn't have to be too gigantic in terms of liters. Um, I'm not remembering the exact liter size of a, of backpacks right now. Maybe somebody else on this chat has better, um, response to this, but they don't have to be gigantic. And we, um, we try and stick to a third of a camper's body weight or less for, um, what they're carrying. So if you're, you know, your kid is kind of a smaller kid, 90 pounds, they're not going to be carrying 30 pounds of weight. That's, that's going to be a heavy backpack. But, um, the more important thing is that the waistband fits comfortably around their hips. If it's too big, it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, so having a small waistband or a waistband that fits appropriately on your camper is the more important thing than the actual like liters of capacity for the backpack. Um, but we have a quite a large supply of backpacks um, for kids to borrow. So I don't recommend buying one unless you think that your camper is going to be using it in the off season frequently and they're fully grown. <laughs> uh, what kind of hat should they bring? A, all the way around full brim hats are great because their ears um, can get sunburned. We are at high altitude. Um, lot, kids, some kids bring those ones that have like the bigger back to cover their necks um, or just a baseball cap is good. Um, a lot of staff members like will tuck a bandana under their baseball cap when they're backpacking to kind of cover their neck and then you can dip it in water and it cools you down. Um, but yeah, definitely a hat is good. But those floppy lightweight ones that they can, that are all the way around that they can stuff in their backpack, um, those are great too. Um, should they bring an individual tent? Got it. That was um, answered before. They can't share with friends. Do base campers need backpacking packs? I just answered that one. How about showering? I answered that one. We're just cranking away here. How might we get names of the campers in our son's group in case we can try to connect beforehand? Okay, got it. Oh, that is one thing. Um, we do have a WhatsApp group for parents um, that hopefully you've gotten the invitation from Mariah through our um, camp doc. And if you haven't, I will um, write myself a note right now to send that the WhatsApp um, <clears throat> invitation again again. And that is a way that you all can connect with each other without us being in the middle. So it's, you know, we're not in my day when I was a camper, camping only used to just send us a paper packet with everybody's name, address, and phone number on it. <laughs> um, but that's not acceptable anymore. So it's up to um, the campers to exchange numbers. Now that most kids who are 12 and up have phone numbers, uh, or for the families to connect, we have, we've created the WhatsApp group. It's also going to be really helpful, um, for a bus transportation. If you're taking the bus, if your camper is taking the bus, Mariah, who's our office and outreach manager, she's going to use that WhatsApp group to tell families if the bus is on time and et cetera, any updates there. So, um, I saw that Julie and Jennifer were already connecting. So WhatsApp might be, um, a way to do that. Kevin asks, how cold will the lakes and streams be? That's a, it's hard, hard to say exactly in degrees, but cold. <laughs> um, our lake is pretty chilly first session. I mean, depending, it's still depending on the snowpack, what we have 
in the basin. Um, when we arrived last year, it was almost half covered in snow. Um, and so it was very cold. We would jump in and out and that was it. Um, but by, you know, by second session, kids are floating around and having a great time staying in the water for a while. Certain lakes are colder than others, depending on, um, you know, if they're actively being fed by cold, by snow melt springs or how deep they are. Um, but as my husband says, it's always worth it. <laughs> always worth it to get in the water after you've been hiking or at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, our kids don't get in the water unless they're supervised by one of our staff lifeguards. That's a, a huge um, safety concern is water. So um, campers are not allowed to even dip a toe in the lake unless there's a lifeguard there. Um, okay, question from Mayumi. For the base camp group, there's overnight backpacking trip, but on the other nights, will the kids be staying in the same campsite for the whole time? Great question. So um, in our base camp program, they go on two backpacking trips. Um, the first trip, they'll go with their group that they're assigned to. Um, and then in between, they also camp with their group in their campsite. Um, the only exception is sometimes groups that are close to each other will do a sleepover where the whole group of eight kids will come and sleep in the next door campsite. Um, or, <clears throat> um, and then they go, then they're back. So they're back in camp for a few more days and then they switch up. The counselors create hikes based around a theme or a specific place that they want to go. And they advertise that to the campers. And then the campers um, fill out a little form where they rank their choices, where they want to go and with who. And then I do a whole bunch of a uh, table full of paper gridded out magic. And we put together new groups with different counselors and different campers. And so they get to go on their second trip. Their choice hike um, is four days, three nights with a different group of kids and, and different counselors. And so that's really fun. They go, um, you know, they focus on looking for wildflowers or they'll bring art supplies or music or they'll it'll be like the the pizza hike and they'll you know the counselors will bring extra stuff to bake pizza or they'll hike really really far or they'll go to the best swimming lake and have a layover and just swim all day so each hike has its own theme and the kids get to um choose where, where they want to go and then there's a couple more nights they're back in their same campsite with the group they started with so yeah um Okay, Megan asks, can the kids wear trail hiking shoes instead of more traditional heavy hiking boots? Yeah, absolutely. Um, whatever your kid is most comfortable in uh, is is going to be the best, as long as it's sturdy enough to hold up to, to rocks, basically. Our whole camp is covered in rocks. <laughs> so, um, you know, things like Crocs will get worn down pretty quickly, but they're also really, Crocs are great for the trail because they weigh nothing and then they're protect and they're, they're closed toed. So, um, Crocs or other lightweight closed toed shoes are great to bring for their second pair of shoes, but you don't have to have like heavy hiking boots if trail runners are more comfortable, um, as long as they're kind of sturdy and have like a, a pretty solid sole, um, should they bring a head net or otherwise you know what a head net is not a bad idea um we have some that we lend out to kids who are especially tasty to the bugs <laughs> um but if you can find a head net or there's um these pop-up ones that um because i would say do not buy the kind that hang have to hang from ceilings or hang from a tree because that really limits where the kid can sleep um, and not all of the places where we set up camp are conducive to those, but the kind that are like, um, have like a little wire twist and pop-up situation, those are great. Um, and yeah, and sometimes, like I said, sometimes the bugs, we have usually like two hatches per summer where everybody is bothered in the whole Trinity Alps um, for like a night or two. But then the rest of the summer, there's just few, very few mosquitoes. And I, even though this lake is named Mosquito Lake, we're not known for having mosquitoes. <laughs> um, so send the WhatsApp again. Yeah, I will. I will definitely send that out through Camp Doc tomorrow. 
what sort of temperatures are we looking at was a question. It really varies. Um, first session tends to be cooler. Um, be, we are at, our base camp is 6,500 feet. And then some of the lakes are even higher than that. And so the higher you get, the cooler it gets at night. Um, but daytimes can be really hot depending on where you're hiking. Um, in your in the direct sun, it can be you know get up to ninety degrees. It doesn't get it doesn't get like you know Sacramento hot in the summer, <laughs> but um, it can be hot during the day and really cool at night. We'll frequently go from shorts and a tank top to down jacket and jeans at campfire in one day. So um, layers are are really important, and you know a beanie is a great thing for kids for nighttime. Um, a lot of kids will just like sleep in a beanie in their sleeping bag to keep their um, body heat in, um, keep their ears warm. And socks, warm socks are also a great uh, piece of equipment <laughs> for keeping kids warm and dry. How much time are Summit to Summit folks at base camp and how much on overnight trips? So as the name implies, the summit to summit folks are not at base camp. They are, they start at the summit and they end at the summit. So often they will pass through camp on day 14 and um, have maybe do their silk screen, their shirts, like cut out a design and make their own um, pattern, maybe come to campfire on the last night. But then they will often night hike all the way down to the summit um, and sleep there. So they don't generally spend any nights at, at base camp. They are on the trail. Um, are kids permitted to bring a pocket knife or a lighter? Pocket knife, yes. Like a, So our rule about pocket knives is it has to be folding and has to be the width of their palm or smaller. Um, no fixed blade knives are allowed for campers. And campers don't need to have lighters either. Um, we don't, we don't allow kids to have lighters. We do allow kids to help build fires and they can light a fire with matches supervised with their counselor. The counselor will, um, if they're interested in that, teach them about how to build a campfire safely and how to use matches in a safe way. Um, but we don't let kids have lighters or matches unsupervised. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands up, so I'm gonna just keep going through the chat, but feel free to ask live questions too. Uh, what are you allowed to send in the mail? Care packages with home-baked cookies or is it no food? Um, that is a great question. <laughs> and it's something that I um, have been meaning to add to the Q&A on our website because it is a common question. So we don't forbid care packages. We don't have a policy that says no care packages, but um, we do talk to kids and parents that we tell kids and parents that anything that gets sent needs to be shared. So um, if a camper receives a package with homemade cookies, then they're expected to share that with at least their whole group, if not everybody who's standing around, you know. Um, mail is so fun. It is just incredible. I mean, these, especially I would say more with this generation of kids who are so connected, you know, they all have phones in their real world and they are so used to getting input and information all the time um, that when they're out there, if they get a letter from home, it is just huge. It's just so exciting and the package is even better. Um, you know, food and wrappers can be problematic in the woods. It's not our favorite, um, but it's more about equity. You know, some kids get a big fat package full of candy and then other kids don't get any mail from their parents and that's the part that feels you know the hardest um when we're up there but but again we don't we're not gonna have a policy that says absolutely no so it's up to you how you want to deal with that talk to your camper about it ahead of time go ahead and send something that they can share with their whole group um but just know that that's that's kind of how it goes down when they get to camp. It's like, it's a big, it's a big deal when someone gets a package and, um, and yeah, and there's going to be kids who feel like left out because they didn't get one, even if they get a cookie out of somebody else's package. So 
it's um that's just both sides of it I guess <laughs> um but fun care package things yeah mail um puzzles are great like word play things or books or um you know things that are like a pack of cards or some sort of little game that you could send those would be fun things that they could share but um are there life jackets? Absolutely. Kids are uh, required to wear life jackets when they're in the canoes and we have them of all different sizes. And each kid before they get in a boat has to go and have their life jacket checked by the lifeguards. Um, you know, they basically like try and lift up the kid <laughs> by their life jacket to make sure it fits. Um, wondering how long the bus ride is to get to camp. Great question. Um, from the Bay Area, it takes about six hours um and that they take a whole hour stop at Reading for lunch um we do provide a very simple um pbj and fruit milk cookie chips kind of lunch for the bus and some snacks um muffins and things on the way up um but yeah, it's a long, it's a long day for them and then they get up there super excited and then and then they get to walk for a couple hours. <laughs> Um, but somehow they all survive and they have a great time. They get to meet their, they get to meet their friends when they're walking up the road and on the bus. Um, let's see, what sort of themes are there? Kevin asks, and I'm not sure what that question means. The only themes that, that we have are in our hikes, our choice hikes. Okay. Um, so like I mentioned before, the counselors will come up with some sort of a theme and it can be anything from the specific destination being, um, you know, a really special lake that, um, you know, there's this one lake, Holland Lake, which is really tiny and it's some maps, it's not even labeled and it's beautiful. It's up on this ridge. It has a, you know, a lot of lore around it, or it can just, <clears throat> you know, the theme could be like, lounge lizards and they're going to go on the shortest hike possible and have a layover day and just swim around and play cards and not hike far you know so there's it really depends on the counselors what the themes are and then the other place where we have themes is special day on day eight of each session well yeah i guess in in third session it'll also be day day eight but um we have one day where everything is different than the normal um, day to day, we eat meals together. There's a big wacky story that, that gets, um, acted out at morning meeting by the staff. And then generally they present some sort of a challenge to the whole camp. Like we have to save the oh. fill in the blank, or we have to bring everything together or solve this mystery or, um, and so it kind of presents some big challenge everybody's in crazy costumes and then um, we try and focus the the activities um in the morning yeah. everybody's around the craft shack I'm spoiled it'll take seven minutes and then we can eat the, um is around the lake in the afternoon so it kind of builds this community of everybody doing the same thing um and then we have a big goofy we have a big dinner together everybody does the virginia reel which is a big like line dance and it's it's wacky and fun. Um, and then another big campfire basing on the, based on the theme. Usually sometimes there's a big skit at the end that kind of wraps up the story or solves the mystery or whatever. So um, that's my roundabout answer to the question of are there themes? <laughs> um, Stephanie. Okay, I just unmuted. Hi, Martha. Um, okay. I know my friends are going to laugh at me, but I'm, I'm crazy about drowning. So, um, is there like someone there to make sure that, I mean, how deep is it when they're swimming? Are they, do they take a little test to make sure they can be in there without a life jack? I'm just, I mean, I know my daughter can swim, but maybe she, I just, I'm not that confident about deep water. Yeah, that, that is a good question. We do make the campers take a swim test before they can swim um, in our lake or out on the trail. It's a pretty simple test, but they do have to swim with um, one stroke the whole way. It's probably about um, 
I'd say it's like two and a half pool lengths that they have to swim, like across to one. We have a rectangular shaped swim area with buoys. They have to swim to the first buoy, swim across to the second buoy, tread water for one minute, and then swim back. So they make like a triangle. Um, okay. And there's and a if they paddle board that. I'm sorry. Way. If they can't finish all that, can they just go swimming with the life jacket on? uh no they can they can hang out in the shallow end of the water um if they haven't okay. passed the test there is a um the shallow end where kids can stand and they can splash around and float in there um when the lifeguards are, are on duty okay so i've got some work to do this summer <laughs> she can do it she can do it Jeff. i know i know <laughs> okay my Thanks. son my son didn't pass the swim test last summer either when he was 10, but okay. he can do it this year. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. There's someone else whose hand is up, but your name is the name of your phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. But you're still muted. Okay, hopefully that'll work now. <laughs> I swear I've been on Zoom before. <laughs> okay. Hi, Martha, I'm Amy. Um, my daughter is going to be, actually, Bubby has known my daughter since since birth. <laughs> um, my daughter, Matilda, is going to be a first-time camper. And we found out in the last year that she has uh, severe reactions to poison oak. Um, so, and she's learned, of course, because of that, that she has to be extra, extra careful. Um, we'll send her with like the necessary, like the soap and, you know, uh, medication and, um, you know, we're pretty, we'll talk to her doctor ahead of time. So we're pretty, I think we'll be pretty well be prepared. Um, I so I guess, oh, go ahead. good news for you. We are above poison oak level. We have no poison. Oh, oak. oh fantastic. Okay, good. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> yeah. So that is great. No poison oak, no ticks. Um, we used to say no rattlesnakes, but we've seen a few lately, <laughs> but that altitude, um, yeah, okay. we, have, we have no poisonous plants. Oh, that's a huge relief. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, back to the chat questions. Is there a bus from Boulder? No, the, so Jennifer asked, is the bus from the Bay Area to camp included or do we sign up separately? It is absolutely included. You just have to indicate that um, in Camp Doc that you are planning to take the bus in, in one direction or the other, both. Um, there's a place for you to select which bus stop and yeah, it's, it's all included. Um, most of our campers take the buses because we are so far away from most things. <laughs> Is there um, only one bus pickup location then, or wh where is that location? There is a pickup in Palo Alto, Berkeley, Dunnigan, and Redding. Oh, in Redding. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then kids from not Sacramento. <laughs> not sa kids from Sacramento go to Dunnigan usually. It's like a, it's just a rest stop on I five, but it's not that far from from Sacramento. And then kids from Humboldt County or Ashland and Oregon generally drive all the way to camp. Um, what are the policies for medications such as out inhalers and allergy meds? Great. Yes, we we have kids um, who are who have medications, and that's not a problem. What we ask is that you make sure you fill out in as much detail as possible all the medications that your camper will be bringing um, in Camp Doc, and then we when you check in at your bus stop or at Scott Mountain Summit, we will take the medication from the camper, um, put it in a special blue bag with their name on it, and it go it goes directly to their counselor. Well, it goes to the nurse first, and then the nurse, the camp nurse, will check all the medications um, and send the you know the medication register administration record. I'm like, it's an acronym, the MAR, <laughs> um, the sheet of paper where the counselor checks off that it has been administered every day and at the right time that goes directly to the counselor. And 
when they go on choice hikes, they'll go with a different counselor. We have a um, process where the medications go back to the nurse and then they go to the next counselor so that um, we make sure that every kid has their medication before they leave on their hike. The counselors, both counselors with their first aid kit, check in with the nurse last thing before they hit the trail. And that's where the medications all get um, handed out and double checked so that everybody has what they need. Um, and, but inhalers, if there's a kid who is, you know, used to having their own inhaler in their pocket and using, uses it frequently and they might need it, um, on a normal day in the basin, then they can keep that in their pocket. That's, that's fine. But also that's something that you would want to write on your, um, in camp doc in the medication section so that we know. Do backpacking groups have a way to communicate with base camp? Yes, our groups got carry two-way radios when they're out on the trail. Um, I have a radio on me 24 seven. Um, I love my radio, keeps me company <laughs> all summer long. Um, but the staff have check-in times and then um, they don't keep theirs on so they can communicate with us in an, in an emergency. Um, and if we need to communicate with them, we have check-in times or we know where they are and we have staff in the basin that we can send um, to, to get them on foot if need be. But more often than not, it's them needing to communicate with us. Um, and that system has been working really well. And then for a couple of groups, some of the summit to summits that go further afield um, into the Marble Mountains, for example, we have Garmin inReach satellite communication devices that we send with those groups. And um, basically it's like a texting device that we can receive um, information and send messages back to them. What about needed meds? I'm not sure what that, what that question is. So Kevin, if you have more questions about meds, you can call me directly or um, send me a, an email. We can talk. Do we need to update our daughter's profile to allow her to bring non-prescription meds? Ah, okay, non-prescription medication. So um, yes, anything that you're sending that would be considered like an over-the-counter med, um, you do need to let us know and we would keep it, but something, but you don't need to send things like Tylenol, Advil, um, you know, basic allergy medication if it's an as needed. We have all of that stuff. We have a pretty good pharmacy over-the-counter supply of stuff like that um, in the nurse's shack. And that just makes it more easy for us to control and to keep track of what we've given a kid. Um, we don't allow kids to just keep over-the-counter painkillers or anything on them um, because they're children. And you know, it's up to us to make sure that they're safe. So um, even if you have a teenager who, you know, takes their own ibuprofen as needed, please write that down and we will give them that responsibility, but we just also need to know that it's happening. We can't just let um, kids take as much ibuprofen as they want at any time. We have to know what's happening. So um, anti-itch, like a topical ointment, something like that, sunscreen, they should have their own. Um, absolutely. Things like, uh, you know, face lotion or, um, like an eczema cream or something like that. We want to know about it, but if it's, you know, a topical use kind of thing, they, they can keep it on their own and carry it with them. Um, but all of these things would be on an, as, as a one, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Each camper's individual case discussed with the nurse. Um, so the more information you send us in your camp doc profile, the better. So I encourage you to overshare if you have questions about anything that you're sending um, with your camper. Okay, going back to Stephanie and then Allie. Hi, Martha. Um, okay, so my understanding is the girl, you know, the kids that are first time campers and they're 11 going on 12, they'll be 11 at camp. Um, they, they hike in for a two night, like, uh, hike in from base camp. Is that correct? Yeah. They'll do a three day, two night backpacking trip for third session. Yep. Okay. And then, and that's the only time 
they go and do like a hike in, stay three three days, two nights, just one time. For third session, yes. Okay. And then for third session, these choice hikes that you're talking about, is that does that have anything to do with them or no? In third session, that's the piece that gets cut out of the 14 days. Those okay. Are, yeah. So they have just okay. the days on trail and then the other seven are camp or travel days. Okay. So they're basically like, basically in camp doing the camp structure, but then they do the three day, two night thing. Yeah. With the group that they are assigned to when they get there. Yep. Got it. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a little different with the shorter session, but. That's what I thought that I just was like making sure that those choices, we weren't having to worry about those choices and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the parents don't have to worry about the choice hikes at all because it's totally up to the kids. It doesn't get, um, it doesn't even get announced to them until day six. So sorry, parents, you can't control what choice hike your kid goes on. You have to just take a step back and trust in the process. <laughs> I'm a mom too. I know <laughs> it's hard. Allie, your turn. Go ahead. Um, okay. So Olive is in that same group with Steph's daughter. Um, that third session. So I'm wondering uh, two things. Number one is about the sending mail or care packages um, mm -hmm. in LA. So what what do you suggest for timing? Like how long should I give it to get there? That's a good question. Like if you send it the day they leave, that's probably a good. <laughs> um, okay. So it's yeah. So we there they come they get to get we days are numbered at camp. So the day that they arrive is day one. Um, they, they'll leave on their hike on the morning of day four and get back on day six. So if it arrives by day six, that's perfect. Um, you know, you, they could, they might possibly get mail on day three. Um, but we probably won't even go to town on day two. So even if you send it earlier, you know what I mean? Um, the, the mailbox where we get our, the post office box is like an hour from camp. So um we don't go every day <laughs> no <laughs> but if it it takes you know take it takes normal normal mail amount of time for the mail to get to our post office box in Callahan but then it's just us picking it up it's not um super regular but definitely if it gets there between day three and day five we always pick up food on day six we always pick up mail on day six um when they come back in they have fresh fresh food. So that's always a day that we go to town. Okay. So my other question is, feel free to tell me no, but I'm just wondering if you said, if there's like any photo communication from counselors or staff so that I can, you know, sneakily watch Olive's adventure unfold. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> we, we said, oh, Okay. I know. I know. It's really <laughs> so hard in the real world. Um, but it's we try there's no there's no Wi-Fi. There's no communicating. Our counselors also aren't allowed to have phones. Um, they take pictures on digital cameras. We take here's what we do do. We do take a picture of every group before they leave for their hike, and then I send out um a Google photos link to all of you that says your camper is off on the hike and they're having a great time and you'll be able to find them in one of the group photos but that's all I can guarantee <laughs> and then at the end of the session I gather up all the photos that people have taken um, and put them in a google photo a shared album for that session and then you can look at at the session after they get back but we so, just don't we it's just not, don't, not, it's it's not, not not nothing, but it's you can't watch it unfold. <laughs> I'll watch it, watch it after it unfolds. How about that? <laughs> Thank. Um. Okay. Let me go back to the chat. Wow, it's been an hour already. Um. Megan asks, "What about younger kids who can't swallow pills yet? Do you have an example liquid pain?" Yes, we do have chewables and um liquid Tylenol and um. Like I said, we have a pretty extensive over-the-counter pharmacy situation. So if you're 
camper can't swallow pills, we will make sure that they get the pain relief or the allergy relief that they need. What about in the first session base camp? Do they have overnight hike? Yes, in the first session base camp, they'll have a three-day hike, two nights, and then a four-day, three-night hike. Um, I got to the bottom of the chat. Stephanie. Okay, I'm back. Um, so piggybacking on Allie, what can we send them with a digital camera? Yes, a regular digital and it, camera. Obviously, it needs to be battery operated because they can't plug it in anywhere. Right. Yeah, batteries or, you know, one fully charged rechargeable battery should be fine. And for someone who happens to know the director pretty well or is on this call right now, if they need <laughs> to char charge their camera battery, they can just ask me and I'll plug it in overnight. We do have solar panels on our office building um, where we have electrical outlets, but uh, we just don't okay. like to have phones that also that use their phones as cameras because yeah. then they're teams and all the other things. Right. Oh yeah. I don't want her to have her phone, but I know she's going to want to take, I, they're yeah. going to want to take photos of everything. Yeah. So I also, um, I don't know if you saw in any of my newsletters that I've been asking for people to donate digital cameras. You know, a lot of people have them and don't use them anymore because they just use their phone. And I just got, someone sent me a box with six cameras um, and we already had three. So I'm hoping that I can send them out with the counselors yeah. so they can get pictures on the trail of the campers doing the real thing um, out there. So, okay. I, and you know that um, well, we're going to get some really cute pictures of your kids, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. For everybody else. I've known Stephanie's daughter since she was a <laughs> toddler, tiny baby. Um, baby. So yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have a digital camera, send it and we, we will charge it. If we're driving, where is the drop off? Scott Mountain Summit is um, on Highway 3. And if you go into Camp Dock in the transportation section, when you click on, on your transportation choice, then there's also driving directions for all of those um, places. But I believe it also says in there, if you're driving to Scott Mountain Summit, do not trust Google, uh, Google Maps because it will probably try and send you the wrong way. Um, so we've written out actual directions is, to that is spot. It the same, is it the same place where the bus uh, would drop off or do we? Yeah. Or, okay. So they'll then do the seven mile hike up to the camp. Yes. Yes. Everybody gets dropped off in the same spot. Um, it's basically a big parking lot um, and it's a trailhead. Usually we see PCT hikers crossing through um, when we're having our big circle of kids. And then they meet their group and their counselors, and then they all walk up together. Okay, we did it. I got to the bottom of the chat. There's no other hands raised and it's only 8.02. Well done, families. Anything else? Any last questions? Feel free to send me messages. Um, it's actually a much more fun part of my job is talking about camp with all of you and doing like accounting and insurance and all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so feel free to send me messages. Um, and we will make sure to send out that WhatsApp invitation again through Camp Doc. Um, and if you know anybody else who's interested in the girls getaway for third session, let me know, send them my way. Um, and well, what you. exactly is that? I don't know if I ever got any messages about that. Yeah. Yeah. So third session, um, we're offering a trail program for girls and female identifying campers um, that are, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> there's an inside joke in the chat. Yes. Bring your own left handed smoke shifter. Um, so it's going to be all girls and female identifying campers, and they're going to go out for probably seven days of the 10 day third session. Um, okay. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Great rest of your week. Can't wait to meet you. Bye kids. Martha.
Yeah, Can't thank wait. you so much for taking the time with us. Yeah, happy to. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Meet you too. Bye. Gonna be a thank you, Martha. Bye. Bye-bye.